Welcome to this recorded message for Sunday the 31st of May, which is Pentecost. Let's come together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to give you our thanks for the presence of the power of your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you sent down your Spirit upon those early believers. And we believe, Lord, that even today that you are sending down your Spirit upon your people. So we come, Lord, to worship you. We come, Father God, to praise you and to thank you for the gift of your Spirit. And we pray, Father, as we come to open your word on this special day, that there might be something, Lord, for us, that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, we come rejoicing that you are a God who wants to do a new work in us and through us. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would continue with us and bless us this day. So hear our prayer, and we bring these things before you in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to share some verses from the prophecy of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and reading from verse 1 to verse 14. And the heading is the valley of dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Some years ago I used a PowerPoint for a children's talk called Upside Down Town. It was a fictional story based on a town of that name. And in that town everyone walked upside down. They even played football upside down. And their favourite cake? Well, it was called Upside Down Cake. It obviously wasn't easy living in upside down town. People had to have a heavy belt tied around their waists so that they wouldn't fall over. 
and everyone's face was red as the blood all went to their heads. One day, though, a man came to Upside Down Town whom no one had ever seen before. And what was more surprising is that this man walked, as far as the residents could see, upside down. Or really, the right way up. The man did not have a belt. And although people said that what he was doing was not natural, the man said that he was in fact walking the right way up. The man told the residents of that town that they should get rid of their belts so that they could walk the right way up. And one by one, that is exactly what the people of that town did. They began to experience the world not upside down as before, but the right way up. And when they did, they discovered that this way was in fact much, much better. They were freed from the burden of their belts and they discovered a new way of living altogether. When I used that fictional story, I did so because there are, I think, a number of lessons which follow from it. There's the point that, like the people who all walked upside down, we naturally live our lives in a different way than God would want. We don't give him the first place in our lives. Our standards are not God's standards. We are by ourselves very far from him. And the Bible tells us that without Christ, our lives are what we would call upside down. But if we change, as the people in that story of upside down town eventually did, then we discover that life is totally different. We see things in a different light. Life has meaning which it never had before. We begin to experience what the Bible calls life in all its fullness. And that fullness comes about if we come to faith in Jesus. I think we'd agree that in the present situation, many people's lives have actually been turned upside down. There are many restrictions which are being placed upon us. And for most of us, the changes which these restrictions bring about in our lives are negative rather than positive. Although we're pleased that we're beginning to see uh, an end to lockdown. But where am I going in this talk? Well, today is Pentecost, when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on the first believers. And at that time, their lives were turned upside down. If we want to know more, then we can read the first four verses in Acts chapter 2, and listen also to the short midweek thought which was posted on this website last Wednesday morning. When the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, their lives were changed for the better beyond recognition. And I believe that even today, people's lives are changed when they experience the power of the Holy Spirit. The passage to which I felt led for this message is from chapter 37 of the prophecy of Ezekiel. And although this is a book of the Old Testament, we find here some prophetic words concerning how the Holy Spirit can turn lives upside down. In considering them, I'd like to highlight two particular issues with which the prophet Ezekiel deals. Firstly, there is the great problem. And secondly, there is the great change. The great problem and the great change. Allow me to share some thoughts on each, because I certainly believe that they are relevant for this day, which we call Pentecost, a day when believers' lives were truly turned upside down. Let's think first of all about the great problem. We discover that at the beginning of this chapter, the prophet Ezekiel found himself 
in the middle of a valley which was full of dry bones. <coughs> Although to some Bible commentators they were actually human bones and they were scattered on the ground. They may in fact have been the bones of men who were killed in battle because they were not buried. They simply lay on the ground and they were dry as dust as they had been long exposed to the sun and the wind. Now history books tell us that the Jews in Babylon were like those dead and dry bones and they were unlikely to ever come together. They would probably never be formed into a living body. There was basically nothing to ignite. To put it another way, as we read in verse 11 of this chapter, the Jews were in a terrible condition. Their bones were dried up and their hope was gone. They were cut off. And I believe that there's an application here about the problem of being not physically dead, but being spiritually dead. Of being physically alive, but having nothing spiritually. And when we consider the lives of many people in our lands, then we have to say that as regards spiritual things, as regards the things of God, there can often be something akin to deadness. <coughs> Put another way, there is disinterest. There's no desire for anything to change. No desire to either know God or to allow him any say in our lives. And that's similar to the situation facing the prophet here. We read in verse 3 that he asked the question, Can these bones live? In other words, can any life come from them? And the answer has to be, that they can live. God can change them. And more importantly, they need to be changed. They need, if you like, to be turned upside down. As regards our own society today, we have to believe that things can change. But although we need to desire such a change, we have to know that any change cannot come from us but that it's entirely the work of God. And believers, I think, need to pray like the psalmist in Psalm 85 when he cried out to God, Restore us again, O God our Saviour. Will you not revive us again? I wonder if we think that our lives are dry. Are we in a rut? Are we simply existing? If we can say yes to any of these questions, then I think that we need the presence and the power and the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit to change our lives. Because to use the thoughts with which I began this message, without being alive with the Spirit, our lives are upside down and they need to be changed to be the right way up. Point number one, the great problem. And point number two, the great change. We've commented already that things can change. The question though is how? Well, going back to verse four, we find that the prophet was instructed to prophesy to these dry bones. Notice the words of his instruction. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. What was required for life was the word of God and the working of the Holy Spirit. Nothing more, nothing less. It was only such a working by the Spirit which would change their lives to be what they ought to be. It doesn't re really need me to say that in our land today things are at a spiritually low ebb. Sadly, even in many churches, there's little concern for the Word of God or the working of the Holy Spirit. But it's through hearing God's Word and through the working of the Holy Spirit that lives are changed. People are changed. Church fellowships 
are changed. Even communities are changed. I believe that the word of God is the word of life. It's in the scriptures that we learn about Jesus, about what he has done for us by giving himself on the cross. We find out about life in all its fullness. And it's when the Holy Spirit does his work in our midst that we become changed people. People who recognise the great need for the Lord in their lives. People who are then able to respond in faith. People whom the Holy Spirit in a certain way turns upside down. In many ways, sadly, the celebration of Pentecost is relatively unknown by many people in our society today. Last weekend, which broadly coincided coincided with Pentecost, was known certainly in England as Whitson. And Whitson is, for most people, little more than a holiday. And yet Pentecost ought to be well known. It is, after all, what we might call the birthday of the church. The Christian church began at Pentecost. And there was tremendous power at Pentecost. The great power which is available through the Holy Spirit is clear when we consider the basic situation in which the early church found itself. It had none of the things that we might think are essential for success. Things like buildings, money, political influence, social status. And yet the early church saw great numbers of people coming to faith in Christ. They saw the dry bones about which Ezekiel prophesied. They saw them coming alive. And that was because through the Holy Spirit, they came to spiritual life. Lives were turned upside down. They were changed beyond recognition by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that that same Holy Spirit is available today. He can turn lives today upside down. He can bring to life individuals and churches which are spiritually dead. He can change your life and mine. The question is whether we are open to him. I've recently been listening to some of the music of the contemporary hymn writer Robin Mark. And I'd like in closing to share some of the words which he has written, some based on this 37th chapter of Ezekiel. He says, These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh, and these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding the temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in the world, and we are the labourers in the vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. The question for ourselves is whether or not we are dry bones. And if we are still dry, the challenge is that we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and to bring us to spiritual life. Are we becoming as flesh? In other words, are we becoming alive, spiritually alive, rather than than remaining spiritually dead. Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to turn our lives upside down, which is actually the right way up, and to do that for God's glory and also for our blessing? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, that your Spirit changes things beyond our comprehension. We pray, Father God, that uh, no matter our situation with you in these days, that we would ask, Lord, whether we have faith in Christ, which is real, life-transforming, and indeed, Lord, if that faith is ours, that we might be able, Lord, to grow in our knowledge of you and to have our whole lives turned upside down, changed beyond recognition by the power and the presence and the infilling 
of your Spirit. We continue to pray, Heavenly Father, for the situation in which we find ourselves. We ask, Lord, that your Spirit might move in our midst, in our land and in the world. We ask, Lord, as we find ourselves perhaps hopefully coming out of this time of lockdown uh, in, in simple, short ways, Lord, that we would be able to look to you and give you our thanks that you are a God who is working today. We pray, Lord, that even through the lockdown and even through the situation, Lord, which has overtaken us in our own land and in other lands in the world, Lord, that you might be working, Lord, to bring people to yourself and to uh, come to know Jesus and to build their lives upon him. So we pray, Father, for those whose lives have been turned upside down in another way through the coronavirus, those, Lord, who are struggling in all sorts of different ways, health-wise, financially, uh, not knowing what tomorrow might bring. Father, we pray for them. And Lord, we would pray for people in their troubles that they might look to you and that they might know that you are a God who is able to change things and situations and lives and that they would be open, Lord, to the working of your Spirit within them. So just bless us, Lord, as we think of your word and as we thank you, Lord, on this day when we celebrate the birthday of the Christian church, we ask, Heavenly Father, that we would be open ourselves to your Spirit working in us and through us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Spin.